We want to make sure that Zimbabweans have a better life. Our desire as the opposition is to make sure that we are an opposition which is going to build. We are an opposition which is going to make sure that a Zimbabwean have a better life. We want to make sure that we become a government in waiting for real. We want the people of Zimbabwe to see us through our actions. Right now we've got COVID-19, which has devastated the whole nation. And as MGCT, we are saying we want to be a responsible leadership, a leadership which is going to make sure that we work together as a nation so that we fight this scale called corona, coronavirus. And that's why we called our members of parliament to make sure that they attend parliament so that we are able to deal with all the issues to do with coronavirus. People want food out there. People want a better life. And this can only happen when people sit around a, a table, when members of parliament go to parliament to raise those particular issues. But I would like to say to every Zimbabwean, to say as the official opposition, we are here to serve you. We are here to work for you. We will make sure that we do everything in our power. And we have returned back to our values, or to our founding values and principles of the MDC. And we are going to make sure that whatever we do, we do it based on our founding values, on our founding principles as a movement. So this is the leadership that we which is here. And we called you so that you know that we are here at the Morgan Richard Tangrai House today. We are now working from the Morgan Richard Tangrai House. And this is the leadership which is going to be making sure that we take this country forward, we build our nation so that every Zimbabwean has a better life. I will hand over to the Secretary General so that he takes you through on the issues that we discuss as a standing committee. Over to the Secretary General. Thank you very much, Madam President, uh, and the members of the National Standing Committee. <coughs> I would like to start with uh, the questions that happened today uh, to the leadership. As you know, some of the leaders left the party uh, to form their own political party. So in terms of the constitution, certain positions um, have to be approved by the National Council, certain positions have to be um, uh, appointed. Uh, where there is a, a gap, and the following uh, have been uh, appointed into the National Standing Committee in terms of Clause 9 of our Constitution. Um, Engineer Elias Mzuri, Senator Mzuri, is the Deputy National Chairperson. Um, Honorable Chimanikire, Jim Chimanikire, uh, the Deputy National Organizing Secretary, as you know, uh, Honorable Abed Nico Bebe uh, he is here and the National Chairperson. Deputy Treasury, uh, uh, sorry, National Organizing Secretary. Deputy Treasurer General, again, that position is vacant and it is now being occupied by um, Chief Njobu. Chief Njobu was the uh, provincial chairperson for the South African province for the 2014 structure. The Deputy National Spokesperson, um, uh, Honorable Kalipani Pugen, um, is now the Deputy uh, uh, National Spokesperson. And uh, the Chairperson for the Youth Assembly, as you know, Mr. Ekmo Diwa of Bordeaux, has uh, publicly stated that uh, he is no longer a member of the party. So his deputy has taken over as the Chairperson of the National Youth Assembly. It is a good surprise, ladies and gentlemen, I can anticipate that, and that person is Shakespeare McCoy. <laughs> Our secretary for elections uh, is uh, Mr. Manasa Changrai, the, uh, uh, the young brother to our icon. We will be making some other announcements as we get clarity on uh, where various officers stand. But these are appointments. The Deputy National uh, Secretary for 
election is the Honorable Gandhi Mutsingwa, um, a long-time veteran of this of this struggle. There is a, 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 a position that uh, we will announce later regarding the women once we have uh, resolved that. Um, some of the resolutions that we uh, dealt with today, number one, dealt with harvest house. Whose property is this? We saw in the court some people claiming that the harvest house belonged to them. We reiterate that the harvest house belongs to the movement for democratic church as a party. And we will do everything that is in our power to safeguard our property. So there are matters that are before the court, but we want to make it clear that the harvest house or Morgan Sagrai house is not a private property owned by a company. It is owned by, it, it is a, a, a property that is owned by the party. And we will be able to prove that uh, when the time comes in the course of law. We also resolve that we are going to fulfill the Supreme Court judgment. And the Supreme Court was very kind to us in dealing with the document that is now called the Constitution, settled document as the Constitution of the Movement for Democratic Change. That's number one. Number two, nullification of the Supreme Court of the presidency of Advocate Nelson Chamisa and everything that he did in his capacity as president. That includes signing agreements with other people. All that is nullified. We also discussed the issue of the recalls of councillors um, as well as members of parliament who have joined other political parties. We are going to proceed with this, but we will deal with this on a case-by-case -case basis. And as, as we have said and maintained before, we are not a vindictive leadership. We are not there simply to cause misery to people. We are there to safeguard the interests of the members of the MDC. So those who have joined other political parties cannot continue to represent our members in parliament. The, we, we, we want to reiterate here that the Supreme Court, the, the, the High Court, ruled um, that uh, we can continue with our record. In other words, the interdict that sought to stop us from recalling was dismissed by Justice Chitami. Uh, they have appealed against it, but they are appealing against nothing because they did not get the order in the first place. Then the other judgment by uh, Justice Makutire to say that we cannot replace members of parliament even after the expire, uh, even as we face the expiry of the mandatory 90 days, we have appealed against that judgment. The effect of the appeal is to suspend the decision appealed against. And therefore, if things stand, nothing stops us from recalling our members of parliament and replacing our members of parliament. And we will exercise, uh, if need be, we will exercise that lawful option. We received a report on the handover, takeover of Morgan Sangai House. And this has been a subject of a lot of propaganda, which has unfortunately stuck in some of the countries uh, in, in this world because of the uh, images that were broadcast by our colleagues. But this is what took place. The Harvest House on the 4th of uh, June 2020 and at 5 o'clock experienced a handover takeover, which involved um, security guards at this building. So three people came in, uh, new security guards came in to relieve the two who were on duty. So they signed the handover, takeover in a book that we call the occurrence book. Uh, this is the book that is at the reception where we record uh, the handover, takeover. It was smooth and it was without incident. And we reiterate that Advocate Nelson Chamisa was informed of that occurrence. That is why in my statement of that day, I referred to him, I referred to the letter that had been written <coughs> by the acting president to him and specifically referred to him. In all the court papers, he did not file any papers to dispute that. So there was a smooth handover, takeover. 
Then after about uh, three hours, I issued the statement. And after three hours, three hours after the statement, around 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, a child on Wednesday and uh, then for the guard warrant and the uh, 45 um, <coughs> thugs came to this uh, building and they tried to enter the building via the back door. They broke the door uh, at the back uh, and the police who were on patrol intervened and called for reinforcement. We view it as a militia to suggest that the takeover of these buildings involved the army and the police. The army has been patrolling the streets of Harare since the declaration of the lockdown. And I want you, ladies and gentlemen, to take judicial notice of the fact that 60 meters from where we are um, towards parliament, you will see offices of the Zimbabwe Defense Force. So the army does have its offices in this street, about 60 meters from where we are. And of course, when the noise was generated, they were naturally attracted by that, but they, they specifically uh, refused to intervene in the district. And this was confirmed by the employees of Harvest House who took us to court. Washington Gaga, uh, Zawanga Shambari, Kudakwa Shemba Kibiri, Edith Minyaka, and others. They took us to court and they specifically said that the police refused to intervene uh, in the takeover of Harvest House. That is in their habitat. They also said that the army refused to intervene. And these are the affidavits that are before the court of law. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be announcing, uh, following the resignation of Honorable Obed Gutu, we will be announcing our spokesperson in due course after the uh, consultation has taken place. Uh, we also discussed the petition that came from certain members of the National Council who wanted us to hold an images National Council. And our attitude is that uh, we will hold the National Council once the, te the, the, the circumstances uh, permit uh, gathering um, involving these big numbers because the National Council is 202 people. So we will hold the meeting of the National Council. The President will instruct us regarding the death once we have received um, uh, information about uh, the gathering. So we are going to have that meeting. Uh, we are not in a hurry to have that meeting because uh, we had a meeting of the National Standing Co uh, National uh, Council uh, on, on uh, virtual uh, on the 9th of May, and this meeting had uh, uh, made far-reaching decisions. But should members of the party want their leaders to conduct another meeting, we are open. We want uh, to have this meeting, and we will announce the date uh, in due course. Ladies and gentlemen, as the, as the movement for democratic change, as our president said, we are now going to be embarking on the reform agenda. As you can, as you remember, the party had been on the reform trajectory with the formation of the national election reform agenda under President Changrai, the demonstrations that we held for electoral reform. This had been packed uh, in the issues of electoral reform social reform, economic reform, political reform, had all been uh, 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 shelved. We are now going to embark on the reform process, on the reform agenda. And we are going uh, to be discussing with other political parties. In the standing committee, uh, the president gave a report uh, of the meeting that we had with the alliance partners. As you know, uh, some time ago, I think two weeks ago, we had a meeting of five out of the seven alliance partners. Uh, and this meeting was to discuss the future of the alliance. We did not conclude uh, on the, this discussion and we were supposed to carry the discussion uh, on the 18th of June. Again, we couldn't because of uh, certain logistical reasons. But we are committed to working with others. We are committed to creating synergies. The president and other senior leaders will be meeting leaders of civic society uh, to brief them on what is happening uh, within the party, to brief them on how we are bringing the, 
the, the party back uh, to the rail. Uh, as, as you know, the party has been derailed and so on. So we want to bring back a leadership and a new politics, a new politics that is based on rational disputation and a new politics that avoids violence, use of hate language, uh, and so on. A new politics that looks at the lives of the poor Zimbabwean people, that looks at the lives of the disadvantaged ma uh, advantaged masses of Zimbabwe. And the leadership said uh, in the meeting that we are going to go back to the founding objective of the MDC. And the founding objective is one, and it was to fulfill the unfinished business of the liberation struggle. And this is what this leadership has committed itself to be doing. And uh, I have to let you into various things that the leadership says, um, uh, and so on, uh, the need for tolerance, um, an apology that was given by my young brother Shakespeare <coughs> to the president, and that was quite touching. And we are very grateful at the level of maturity displayed by Shakespeare in that regard. And uh, please, um, uh, we want uh, everybody to join us in thanking him for what he has done. Uh, and I've been talking to him. He is very focused on the objective of this struggle. And you will be seeing more and more of him as he leaves his youth assembly um, in, in, in the country. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to end here regarding uh, the resolution that we have today. And we want to invite President. Um, sorry, for this, so you uh, can take me. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. We, we came out here to attend you when you've been waiting for some time. We had to finish our meeting. So I'm going to take one or two rounds uh, quickly so that we can be able to go off your questions. If the question has been asked, please don't ask it again. Just, just, just appreciate that we, we are constrained with time. So I'm going to start right there. As number one, I'm going to come to you. I want to come to you then. So that's number one, number two, number three, Ah, that's lovely. So you guys agree with that. Number four, <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, let's go. My question is uh, back to the corner. Uh, the MPP uh, proper on the issue of land border. <coughs> what the the uh, Yes, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's not, I'll check the questions and then the leadership will come back and, and then answer. Number two. Uh, my name is Tonio, I'm with uh, TechMakers of TV. I, I need to present this question uh, to, to the whole leadership. I'm not sure who exactly is able to be, we're going to be able to answer this question. Maybe to you, Tonio uh, Pongonzola. I need to understand, uh, there is a general perception that the new MDPC is a club of members who lost the last elections and are trying to find themselves back into the politics by coming together using a back door. How do you respond to that? And uh, maybe, many, maybe can I ask you many questions as I have? And then Not you as many, let me the second one. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe the second question is, uh, uh, what's your take on the last uh, Congress that was done? Because uh, it looks like some of you were there and you actually did lose that last Congress and now you are coming back uh, to have a second different party. Uh, do, do, you, do you take that as a legit uh, Congress before the constitutional announcement was done? Was that not a consultative uh, process that was done within your voters and the people, and how do you check that? And uh, I will have that on later. Number three. Uh, my name is Mubu Ezate, and I'm from the My question is directed to Madam I wanted to find out, uh, after uh, in 2018, you were just with the election, and you passed it. I wanted to find out that uh, it's there for me now to be a two party in parliament, one MP50 with the two MPs, and then the MP50 with the other MP. Uh, how, how do you get out of the Number four. Yes, my name is Dr. Bissanga from Hutton Soul TV and Radio. Uh, 
Honorable Mwanjo, you said that the police were dealing with COVID-19 related issues. Are, are the police who are parked outside in that um, truck also dealing with COVID-19 um, issues? Uh, because we have seen them since they take over uh, stations, uh, maybe there's a new police station that is outside. Just, just wanted um, the point of clarity uh, on that issue. And, and my, my second and um, last, last question, um, is that what is going to be your arrangement level with uh, with the with, with um, Is it because we, we have seen that we have warmed up or uh, maybe too far as Madame Clinton took a uh, warming up to to Zanupia. Is this is still the same status for same engagement? or you are going to be facing uh, Zanukia and seeking accountability where, for instance, there are serious allegations of corruption. Are, we have not had you speak ab ab about that or against that. So I want to understand the relationship this far with Zanukia going forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then we'll come for the second round. Over to you, Madam President. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, le let me just say, um, Let, let, let me just uh, uh, do the, let me answer on the question of uh, Poland. Um, we did not discuss that issue today. Um, uh, we will discuss, uh, discuss other issues. Uh, that issue is going to come and we will advise you uh, once we have uh, discussed about it. Um, are the police part of the enforcing COVID? Now, I want you to understand that they have been parked there before the takeoff. So you cannot say that they parked it because of the takeoff. They have been parked in the street um, for a long period before the takeoff, and you must take judicial notice of that. But after the takeover, the peaceful takeover, and the violence that when they tried to initiate, we obtained a peace order. And this peace order was obtained in the magistrate court and it precluded certain members from coming to Harvest House and causing a breach of peace. It also specifically advised the police to maintain law and order and to make sure that the order is enforced. But the police that you see are not public Harvest The police you see are public outside um, uh, FBC. You just take the judicial notice. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to take judicial notice again that the army has its offices 60 meters from here. And I did ask uh, my colleague my colleague to measure that because I was anticipating your question. And that is the 35 to 40 meters away from uh, this building. We cannot control that. That has nothing to do with that. Um, and uh, as, that, as far as we can see, they have not uh, 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 disturbed anybody. Um, the engagement levels with Zanupia. We are an opposition party. But you, you will find that we are an opposition party that is going to engage with Zanupia in the manner that Morgan Changre's leadership engaged with Zanupia. Um, and if the engagement with Zanu PF was, was multi multifaceted, multi pronged. So we we are an opposition party. We are going to hold the government to account. We see that uh, some of uh, the members of the press ignored a very beautiful fight that was waged by our MPs in Parliament, and that dealt with the uh, uh, the abduction of the girl. It was done that 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 debate was done by Honorable Tekeshe, Honorable Makonya, Honorable Vincent Changrai, who has been the first MPs to heed our calls to come to Parliament. And I also uh, <coughs> debated on that. So yes, we, 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 we are going to engage Zanupia in Parliament. We are going to engage Zanupia in the political life. But we are going to be uh, advancing the interest of the Zimbabwean people, the real objective why we were for. We know that there's been a lot of propaganda. You have my young brother, Rohanya. We have forgotten that he's a journalist in the first place. Um, uh, 
getting uh, into a propaganda. This is how he describes us. But what we really are, we are a leadership that is democratic. We are a leadership that is pro-reform. We are a leadership that is pro-change. We are the lead a leadership that is not unnecessarily talkative. We are a leadership that plans. And you will see uh, the, the, the leadership here. This is a serious uh, leadership. And uh, if I, I can just abuse this uh, uh, opportunity. Um, Engineer Mdul was the organizing secretary in 2008. And in 2008, we won both the presidency and the parliament and local government. And his deputy was the Honorable um, uh, Morgan Comich. They were the people who were in the organizing department who planned Zanzibar's downfall. The deputy president to Shangrai was Madame Kufe. And when uh, Morgan Shangrai was forced into exile, she remained the acting president in this country at that period in time. Um, and, and various of these leaders we are doing one work or another. So we have an experienced leadership, a mature leadership, and so on. Um, my friend from the uh, lovely TV, uh, thank you very much for that question, uh, which deals with uh, uh, people lost in wealth. And I've heard people continuing to say that, uh, Mr. Monzora, you lost in wealth. The same people don't say that Mr. Chamisa lost it to me in Harare in 2014. <laughs> so when you trace the history of defeat in elections, don't be selective. I also beat him. I also won at one point in time. That's not a, 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 an important point. But what is the important point? The important point is that before we went to Guero, the matter of Mashawire was heard in the High Court before Justice Mushore in March. In the, in the standing committee, I then urged my colleagues to stop the Congress in Guero. I was overruled. And it, democracy is the dictatorship of the majority. But I gave my legal advice, it was not listened to. On the 8th, I think, of May, Justice Mshore delivered a judgment which had, which, which had far-reaching consequences for the leadership. I made two suggestions. The first suggestion was that we cancel the Congress altogether. The second suggestion was that we convert the Bureau Congress into an extraordinary Congress. Um, and in that regard, we had to change the Electoral College. Again, we were in the minority. And yes, I did contest in well, well knowing that this was a waste of time. And I did tell my colleagues that it was a waste of time. History has absorbed me. We are not here because of a loss in an election, in a Congress that was nullified. We are here because the Supreme Court of Zimbabwe has ruled in favor of one of us. And that one of us is Elias Mashavira, who was our organizing secretary for Gope District. He was proven right by the court. Because we are not an arrogant leadership, we are going to listen to people who have won in the court cases. We, do, we are not condescending towards him. So we are going to do the correct thing. We want constitutionalism. We want, to, we want people to respect the rule of law. And this is what binds us. And this is what we want to do. And if you trace our history, each one of us here, you will find that it is a history which deals with constitutionalism, uh, human rights, and the rule of law. And this is the passion that we are simply following. Okay. Um, oh, all right. Sorry, Madam President. First of all, I would like to say that the MDC is an organization which has a constitution. This constitution was written by us. And it was adopted first in 2000 as, it, as our first Congress in Chichungu. Then it was adopted again in 2006 at the National Sports Stadium. And then it was adopted again in 2011 in Baba Sioux 
and in 2014 at the National Sports Stadium. This constitution tells us what to do and not what to do. And what the Supreme Court simply did was that it said go back and do what was supposed to be done after the demise of our late president, Dr. Morgan Richard Sandelai. Article 9.21.1 clearly states that after the death of the president, the deputy president assumes the position of acting president for a period not exceeding 12 months and then calls for an extraordinary Congress. Unfortunately, this was not done. So what the Supreme Court simply did was that it said, what happened in Bulawayo at the Stanley Square in April and what happened in Gweru in May, um, 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 was it 20, 2019, is null and void. So both groups must go back and do what the Constitution says they must do. And this is what the simple did. So I have been reinstated as the acting president of MDCT. MDCT has got 103 MPs in parliament, meaning that I am currently the leader of that political party, which has 103 MPs in that parliament. It has happened in other countries. I would like to give an example of South Africa. Musa Maimani was the leader of DA, and currently he is no longer the leader of DA. There is a new leader in that parliament, who is now the leader of those MPs who are there right now. And currently I am the leader of MDCT with the 103 MPs. So the issue of two MPs or whatever MPs does not arise because we are doing exactly what the Supreme Court has asked us to do and already we are preparing for the extraordinary Congress. We are busy right now and want to make sure that it becomes a, a success where we are going to fill the position left by our leader, Dr. Okay. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure follow up. Who else has a follow up? I'm not sure follow up. Please, it must be follow up, not new questions, so that we can go to the second round. Is it a follow up? No, not yet. Okay, let me just do follow up and then we'll, we'll check in the question. Yes, I'll start with you. Okay. Uh, my first question is will be regarding the MP who were elected and we're referring to whatever we prefer the other candidates. Who were elected for the party that was ruled now in the void? Okay. What happened to them? All right, not a problem. Your follow-up. So, uh, Madam President, you know that you follow the Constitution, but the court said that what you did in Stanley State was not following the Constitution. So you must be fired from the party for joining another political party. <laughs> which is stated in your Constitution that anyone who supports any political party other than this one, so you should not be sitting there as a house. Okay. All right. Uh, Madam President, the two MPs, like I said earlier on, the Supreme Court said we must all go back uh, to the 14th of February after 2018. And it is clear, those MPs are now part of the 103 MPs who are MPs who belong to the MGCT. I did not, you are saying I'm supposed to be fired because I joined another political party. Or formed. Or formed another political party. The party that I led is MGC Sangirai. That is the party which contested. And we were very clear to say our colleagues have deviated from the founding values and principles of MDCT, that of non-violence, that of non-discrimination, that of not following the constitution. And we remained respecting the constitution. We remained, you know, along those founding values and principles of the MDCT. We are very we are very clear from the onset. But however, the Supreme Court says. Tell us where and, uh, and, 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 and where, go back and do what was supposed to be done. 
where I was supposed to be given an opportunity to act as, as acting president and then call for an excel Nari Congress. And this is what I'm working on. I am definitely going to call for an excel Nari Congress, which is going to elect a new leader. And this is who we are right now. I did not violate any constitution. I tried by whatever means possible to follow what was in the constitution. However, the Supreme Court said we must go back and then do what the constitution tells us to do. Would you like to It's okay. Right. Um, I'm sure you're just... No, no. I, I, I don't think it's fine. You may not be happy with the answer, but it is the answer. That, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wait. No, no, it's fine. Wait. Hear me out. Hear me out. The NDC that do not belong to the NDC that was uh, okay. Hear me out. by the Supreme Court. Oh. Now, no. Um, uh, if I may answer that, yes. the Supreme Court re realized yes. that uh, uh, after the demise of uh, Dr. Sangrai, the party split into two factions. The one faction was the faction that held the Congress at Stanley Square. By the way, the Congress at Stanley Square was called an extraordinary Congress. It was not an inaugural Congress to form a party. Um, and then it realized it recognized another faction uh, led by Advocate Chamisa that remained part of the MDC alliance. The attitude of the court was that these were factions of one party. Um, these were tributaries of one river. Um, and therefore, uh, the, the Supreme Court then said, return to the status quo ante uh, uh, at the day after Sangrai died, but before the National Council. That meant that the two factions were now being brought into one party. So it is now one party. So these MPs are MPs which belong to one party now. Uh, and they, they, they belong to the group which had more, uh, more members of parliament. They are now one. That is why this party is now being led by the one president who is presiding not over a faction, but over a united party with all its assets, including Agatha, all the offices across the country, <laughs> and the MPs and the candidates. So that is the legal position that, 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 that as it stands. But, but let me take you back to history. In May 2018, I think, Advocate Chamisa um, presided over a discussion to recall Madam Kupe from Parliament. And I'm sure you remember that she was recalled from Parliament by Advocate Chamisa. Now, how do you recall somebody who is not a member of your party? You can only recall somebody who is a member of your party. So this has been one party, and they even went to court to stop her from using the name. And Justice Perry ruled that because it was a faction, it cannot bar another faction from using the assets of the party, including its name and its constitution. They have always been using this constitution, identical way for way. So the proper way of looking at it is that the Supreme Court reunified the party and is now one entity which was led by Morgan Sanders. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, let me take the last round. No. Sorry, sorry, God, that is not asked in the first place. Give me the answer, right? No, I didn't. Sorry, that's number one, number two, number three, and number four. So there's something about this number four. What's happening? <laughs> this is asking questions <laughs> before. Okay. Well, my name is Jose from New York, from New York. Directed to Dr. Kupe. You pulled 45,000 votes in the previous election. That must be a very worrisome figure for someone who aspires to gain his power. What convinced, what, is, what makes you so much convinced that this time around you gain politi um, political capital so that you can attract a huge following? Okay, number two. Uh, my name is Dakumane Silves from uh, Sly Media. Um, <laughs> it follows that uh, maybe. The MPs, uh, because of the Supreme Court judgment and uh, the powers that are vested in your constitution, 
you have the ability to call back those MPs. Do you have the same ability to call supporters to you? That's my question. Okay. Number three. Yes, well, uh, uh, Tony again from Technic TV, our director is going to ask uh, Madam Kube this time around. Uh, Madam Kube, if you may clarify with us, um, in the interest of understanding it, we do know that by the time you had left the party, you were not in good standing with that. Morgan Leader Sangre, that you now uh, are coming out to represent fully all, that you had actually left away before Nelson Tamisa was given as the president of the party. What was your uh, relationship like uh, with uh, Morgan Leader Sangre? And uh, how do you feel uh, representing the MDCC, which uh, gained four, where, where you gained 40,000 and you, you got 2.6 million or 2.1 million debatable? How does that make you feel to then uh, say that you represent all these 110 MPs? when these people are definitely denied you during the polls recently. How does that make you feel say you need them now? Number four. No, number four. <coughs> My name is Enyue Yosam. I'm a freelance journalist. My question is uh, to Senator Monzora. You, you are referring to the late Sanjirai in the Supreme Court judgment. How about the electorate? I group take them to the Supreme Court or the late Sanjirai dress? Okay. Thank you. So, you ask your question, please. Sorry? Yeah, we'll, we'll come for more parts. One extra. Okay. Yes, yeah, that's the last one. Okay, this is the last one, so... Well, there's the, the video that's circulated in the media uh, where you visited um, Morgan Shanghai in Tom a couple of four weeks ago. There have been reports and allegations that you were there for rituals. Yeah. Would you like to take this opportunity to clarify to you what exactly was going on there? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Madam President, as you say. Thank you very much. I want to start with the one. has more supporters than everyone. Now, and you go to the 2.1 million, 2.6 million debate. Now, can I answer this by a rhetorical, rhetorical question? And the rhetorical question is that, did the MDC key in the alliance not campaign as a unit? In other words, did we, Wamzuri, uh, Wakomichi, myself, not campaign in that election for that 2.6 million votes. And how much of that do you give to us? How much do you attribute to us? Oh, you, you and and, 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 and how, 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 why do you say we contributed zero? I went and, 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 and contested in Manikal. Uh, that is the zone that I was given to contest. To, 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 uh, to, campaign, sorry, to campaign for the president and the MPs. And in Manikaland, uh, 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 Nelson Chamisa polled 296,000 votes. Uh, to Munangagwa, 292,000 votes. A difference of, of 4,000 votes. MDC Alliance won the president in Manikaland. How much of that do you attribute to my effort and the effort of the other comrades? Now, when we deal with the political parties, we are not dealing with individuals. We are dealing with the institution. Now, the institution. Why is there a little bit of a question? Just let me know. So, they are institutional votes. But again, another unscientific part of your assumption is that you have carried the center and you have found us with no support, wait, because we have a surprise for you. We do have support. And you will see, you will see, when we conduct our Congress, that we do have the support. Now, you were told by Washington Nube, who, by the way, told something sometimes, okay? You were told by Washington Nube that we would form a quorum at the Congress. And surprise, surprise, 
we have surpassed that by people who have confirmed to come to want to come to the Congress. And uh, again, uh, we were told that uh, we will never be to have a double We will never take this building. <laughs> and where are we? <laughs> we were told that we will not win a single case. Where are we? We were told that we will not be able to recall. Where are we? Why do you underestimate us, my brother? <laughs> Remember, this is the leadership that is ended ZANU PF is the first uncontested defeat. Not just ZANU PF, ZANU PF of Mugabe. Now, I just want to, I know the president will, will answer it herself, but I just want to go to the un unscientific part about what was stated, about what happened in Guerra. About five minutes after we just left the homestead, Fed Cairo tweeted that people were chanting Chamisa's name at uh, Sangre's grave site, and that a video was 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 uh, coming to prove his allegation. Up to now, I'm waiting for that video. Up to now, you have not seen that video where his name is being chanted. So these are some of the these are some of the falsehoods that are said. A simple gravesite eulogy, common in African tradition, is converted into a ritual. How do people do rituals in the broad daylight, in the presence of the deceased relatives, mm -hmm. his young brother, his mother, his nephews, and and his seguru? They were there. This is how low our politics has gone. Who has the visited the, the grave? Who has the spoken at the grave? Who is it who has done that? So in, I know the president is going to answer that, but Zimbabwe has more important things to think about. The opposition has more to think about than superstition. Our people are living in poverty and misery, and we need to take them away from this poverty and misery. And we do not do that by this petty thinking in my respect for you. Thank you. Okay, I think he has responded to the issue of, of, of Sohera, and he has also responded to the issue of 45,000 votes. And what I can only say is that each and every election has its own dynamics. Come 2023, watch the space. Then my relationship with the president, I had a very good working relationship with my president. I have deputized him for 12 years. I worked with him for 26 years. Yes, of course, there was a problem. That one problem when we are at in Bulawayo. And the president sat exactly where I am sitting right now. And he apologized about what happened in Bulawayo. Myself and Abed Nico Bebe went to the president's house and we met him. And the president apologized. Two weeks before the president passed on, I went to South Africa. I visited the president in hospital. He was very excited to see me. We chatted with folks. The president, for your own information, for those who do not know, phoned me two days before he passed on, for those who do not know. I was phoned two days before the president passed on. It was very difficult for him to speak, but those were his last words. You know, he couldn't speak, and I kept on saying, President, you'll be fine, because I've gone through the same problem. I had cancer as well, and I thought that my president was going to be well. Little did I know that um, the situation had gotten worse. May his soul rest in peace. But in a nutshell, I had a good working relationship with the president. And to sum it all, our role as the opposition is to make sure that every Zimbabwean has a better life. We want to make sure that Zimbabweans have jobs, they have food. They have good health, good education, clean water and sanitation. This is what these people sitting in front here are going to be fighting for. And we will make sure that at the end of the day, the people of Zimbabwe have a better life.
Is there any possibility? Is there any possibility? Okay. We'll do it next time around. We will have a certain committee next week. I'll note your questions and then we'll get to that. Thank you so much, media, for being here. Let me say this point and report responsible out there. We have a role to play. Report responsible. Thank you. Thank you.